my god guys oh my god i just finished watching aw dynamite not too just a few minutes ago and the undisputed elite just as we probably all expected what happened has just turned on the young bucks midway through the show guys they uh adam cole came out he made an announcement. He came out with that, with the Young Bucks and Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. He, you know, he said how he was glad he was glad to be back. He said how he, you know, still wasn't medically cleared to wrestle. And he even said how both you know, how he's traveled, you know, with Kyle O'Reilly for all these years. They've been by his side, Kyle and uh, Bobby Fish. He even said how the Young Bucks you know, actually helped him get to AEW. And then he came and mentioned about the trios belt. And he went to say that, you know, because he's not medically cleared, because Kyle's not medically cleared, he told the Young Bucks, he don't think they should challenge for the belts. He don't think they should go for it. And then this is the part where it got crazy. Not long after he said that, guys, he went on to say, hey, I don't think, let me rephrase what I mean by that. I don't think you're worthy of challenging for the belts. I don't think you're capable of winning the belts. And then the ultimate betrayal, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish attacks both Matt and Nick Jackson and also Brandon Cutler who tries to come in the ring and stop the attack only to be saved by the man who they actually left um, high and dry with the whole situation uh, when when it seemed as though uh, Heyman Page was going to be the one to turn on them. Back way back in 2020, they finally reunite. He saves them, and now you're going. And now it looks like we're heading towards a showdown between the Young Bucks. And Heyman Page and the Undisputed Elite. Wow. Oh my God, guys. And the funny thing about this, I think most people, and I know I'm not the only one, was expecting that, you know, maybe they were going to drag this out until Kenny came back and then we would see uh, whose side, because the ultimate question now is whose side will Kenny be on? You know, there's rumors that Kenny is coming back soon. You know, he's had a handful of injuries. Just the fact that he wrestled nearly four years dealing with vertical for so long, that's that's just amazing. Like, the fact he even wrestled that long dealing with that and then having just a multitude of injuries during his whole entire reign as AEW champ when he beat Moxley at Winter is Coming in 2020 and then lost it last year at full gear to... Uh, to Hamman Page, that whole title ring of his, he was he was dealing with a multitude of injuries, and the fact that you know there's rumors, they're saying that been reports that he's close to being to coming back. You got to start to hope to wonder, you know, is Kenny going to come back as a face? He going to come back as a heel? Whichever way he comes back, the crowd's going to go wild regardless because he's been gone for almost a year at this point. But a little over nine to ten months, a little about eight to nine months at this point, he's been he's been out, and you know I'm I'm really interested to see you know how this is gonna play out when Kenny comes back. We've talked about it. We've talked about the showdown. We've talked about you know we've heard them say that there's gonna be some type of thing happen between the elite, um, you know, between the Young Bucks and. And Adam and Kyle and Kenny. I mean, you you started to see the friction first happen the moment that Kyle and Bobby came to AEW because it was just very random. You know, Young Bucks didn't expect it. He didn't even tell them they was coming. They just came out of nowhere. And the Young Bucks were just kind of looking confused. And you had the whole thing of both teams trying to, you know, see who was best of uh, both teams trying to win the titles and um it, it was crazy you know you could you could see that and they and adam was struggling to get them to, to stay on each other's side he even had the he even had the battle royal where cal actually threw 
I think it was Matt Jackson who threw him out the ring, and they ended up winning. Um, so, you know, they, there there was definitely friction between both teams um, from the very beginning. So you knew that something like this was going to happen. So it was only a matter of time. And then on top of that, the fact that, you know, despite what happened with them and Hangman, they never wanted anything to do with Hangman. They even told, even during the whole time, Adam was feuding with Hangman Page when they had their match at uh, Revolution, when they had the other match um, right before Battle of the Belts then, uh, on Rampage. That whole time, like, they didn't want nothing to do with Hangman Page. Um, you know, the whole stuff Adam was doing, they didn't even get involved to help attack Adam Page when he was feuding with uh, Adam Cole. So it was only a matter of time. And then I kind of knew this was going to happen the moment last week they finally came back to interaction with Heyman Page. And it seemed as though they had some things to say, you know, say towards him. And then they were quickly stopped from doing it when the uh, Dark Order came to sell you know, came to talk with Heyman Page. It kind of ruined the interaction. So I was definitely expecting something like this to happen. But just the long, long story of how this all began, you know, it seemed like that first they were teasing it like Hey Man Page was the one who, you know, was going to turn on them. Like he was the one who just couldn't make up his mind. They even when they had that classic tag match for the AEW Tag Team Championships, when him and Kenny Omega teamed up to face uh, the Young Bucks Revolution 2020, you know, at the end of the match, when they uh, went on to retain the belts, they teased that Adam was going to try to hit the buckshot Larry on Kenny, but he didn't. He, he put his arms up like he was going to do it, and he didn't end up doing it. And then later we went to see that it was actually Kenny that was the one that was going to turn, and that was exactly what ended up happening. You know, eventually Kenny did officially turn heel, and it wasn't until... Um, much later when the tournament happened for the AEW, the Eliminator Tournament that Kenny ended up winning where he officially turned heel and submitted, cemented that when he beat Moxley at Winners Coming and won the belt. But the long, long story of how that even happened, how, you know, he lost all his friends at that point, which is why it was hard for Adam Heyman to even want to be friends with the Dark Order because he felt like he didn't have anybody, like he just couldn't, you know, he couldn't trust himself to be with anybody else with the way, with what happened between them. And it all comes back in full circle. So after nearly two years, you know, the Young Bucks have only been a heel for about a year at this point. They didn't turn heel until about, it was around March or April of last year that they officially turned heel and sided with Kenny Omega at the time. And, you know, Young Bucks are definitely great heels. And they're, uh, you know, they really, um, they do good as a babyface, but, you know, as a heel, they just take it to the next level. And they, they had a great ring as tag champs uh, last year during the whole entire time, their whole entire time as champs. Um, winning it at full year from FTR in 2020, keeping it all the way to all to all out last year when they lost to Lucha Bros in a classic steel cage match. But that whole entire ring, um, the teams that they uh, faced and beat SCU, you know, actually put an end to SCU, beating them and breaking that team up officially. Um, I mean, I can go on and on about a lot of the matches, the great match they've had, Lucha Bros, um, you know, Jurassic Express, so many other teams. And literally, it was only a matter of time before you got to see these guys realign. So I'm definitely interested to see what this means for Kenny. I'm fascinated to see which side he goes on. I definitely, of course, see him siding with, you know, um, Heyman Page and them, which would be quite an interesting interaction, which kind of leads you to wonder, you know, because no matter who Kenny sides with, 
you know, it would still be an uneven with, you know, four on one side and three on another. Um, so it's quite, and it does intrigue me also of, you know, how different this would have looked had Kenny, uh, you know, not been sidelined, what they would have done. But I'm, I'm definitely fascinated by this. I think we all knew this was going to happen, and it finally did. So now we're going to get the showdown, you know, and, and I'm just looking forward to it, guys. This was quite a way. I mean, we've seen several face turns in AEW lately. Just last week, Ricky Starks officially turned face when Powerhouse Hobbs turned on him, which was completely unexpected the way they did that. Um, you know, we saw, we've just seen a face turn by the Young Bucks. Even the Acclaim turned face when they were stabbed in the back by, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the gun club. So we've seen quite a few face turns, and this was definitely one of those face turns that um, I think we all knew was going to eventually happen because they were teasing it with their interaction with Heyman Page. And it was just a matter of time. It also gives Heyman Page something better to do from what he's been doing lately. But it all comes back in full circle. Just the whole story of Heyman and, uh, you know, the way that they distanced themselves from him. Because it was, I believe it was after he cost them a match for the tag belts that they kind of distanced themselves from Heyman. So it was never like the case of Kenny where, you know, Kenny just snapped and after they lost the tag belts to FTR All Out 2020, he just left Hangman, you know, and just left with rage. And in the case of the Young Bucks, it was never really like that. They just, they were just upset because, you know, Hangman unintentionally caused them a shot at the tag belts at the time. And, uh, you know, they were they were very unhappy with that, so that was kind of what broke them away from Heyman. And then you know Kenny eventually broke away, but you know like I said, Kenny went on to eventually turn heel at that particular point and brought back the cleaner. So you know it was a whole different story, but definitely you just see how it all unfolded. And fast forward now. To a whole almost two years since that happened and uh, you know they finally reconciled and so the story has just been probably one of the best stories going in AEW and maybe in professional wrestling in my opinion but it's it's been going on for quite some time probably missing out maybe a few elements but I'm trying to sink in as much as I can because it's a long long story and you know obviously they didn't come in too much later. They just, you know, Adam didn't come in until all out last year. Adam Cole I'm talking about. So that story started 2020, ran all the way through last year. Adam Cole comes in the mix. He brings, you know, eventually when Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, when Kyle comes to AEW and Bobby Fish gets released, uh, you know, they come into the fold. So you kind of knew from that point where they were heading, and now we're going to get it. So... Definitely looking forward to it, guys. Just wanted to come here and talk about that. Um, of course, there were a lot of other great things that happened on Dynamite. Besides this, the uh, you know Jericho and Willa Yuta, really great main event. Really, at many times, looked like Willa Yuta was going to win, but Jericho won. He's still getting a shot with Moxley next week. You know, um, the Acclaim had a good <laughs> trash can match with... Uh, the gun club actually kind of reminiscent of the new age outlaws against uh Cactus Jack and um Terry Funk from 1998 on that episode of Raw's War when they had that uh that trash can that dumpster match where they pushed them uh where the new age outlaws pushed them inside the dumpster and JR kept shouting there's people in there there's people in there kind of remind me of that somewhat with how they did this with the gun club um, but uh, yeah, great match, right? Really good match right there. Uh, you know the Thunder Rosa and uh, Britt Baker match with uh, the Thunder Rosa and uh, and Thunder and uh, Tony Storm match with Britt Baker and Jay Hater. That that Jimmy Hater, 
Creator, that was a, a really good match right there that Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter managed to, you know, win. Um, but, you know, a lot of good matches on the show. I just want to talk about this particular segment here. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. So, pretty much, like, subscribe, and talk to you